knowing that the Lord is with us and the Lord is directing and guiding us and keeping us through this new ensuing year. And not only does he keep us in this new ensuing year, but as we reflect back, we have been kept by him all the way and it's nobody but the Lord amen that we can give the credit to and we are so grateful to God as we began our horror bowl uh, in 2024 we invite you to stay tuned and stay uh, prayed up for we have a great day in store for you and a whole lot of things that will happen today. And uh, by the way, the horror bowl is a preachathon. We will be preaching all day today. And uh, we do invite you to uh, listen. And uh, if the, you want to be blessed, come and join us at the Mount Hope Missionary Baptist Church. At this time, we're going to have a young minister to come and do a perfect devotion. Amen, amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Let us prepare for our pulpit devotion. Uh, we will begin with our scriptorial reading. And uh, for our reading this morning, it will be read from the 24th number of Psalms. Yeah, yeah. Psalm 24, verses one through five. And it reads, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, yeah, yeah. the world and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Yeah. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Oh, yeah. Or who shall stand in his holy place? He 
that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Last verse, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come. We thank you for this day that you have allowed us to see. Father, we thank you for this worship service, and we pray now by your Holy Spirit that you would allow your glory to be pressed upon us. God, we thank you in advance for what you're about to do, and we'll be ever so careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' most precious name, amen. Where are we? Amen. We're in the horrible. Amen. We, we praise God for this day. And we realize that the pandemic did not stop the children of God from praising our God and lifting him, lifting him up in praise and in thanksgiving. Suddenly, we are grateful to God to have this day earmarked for uh, our young preachers and elderly preachers, uh, all of the preachers, not all, but some of the preachers that have confessed they called into the ministry at the Mount Horeb Church. We have different bowls. We have the sugar bowl, the Amen. Uh, the uh, uh, Amen. I and, and, and I, I'm at a loss for calling the bold, but uh, Amen. But uh, in 1945, uh, the late Dr. A. A. McCardell uh, looked at the television and said they have the sugar bowl and all the other bowl and they don't have a bowl for the Lord so he said I'm going to have a prayer bowl and he organized the prayer bowl and the prayer bowl is still in existence and from that prayer bowl there has been a whole lot of other bowls organized from a religious uh, perspective. Uh, uh, not only do we have the prayer bowl, we have the O.C. Johnson bowl, and we have the other bowls that are going on and, and, and the, in existence. And so we decide uh, that if we're going to have a prayer bowl and uh, O.C. Johnson bowl, that we ought to have a horror bowl. And so we have the horror bowl, amen, and the horror bowl is initially set up for the preachers that come up from under my pastorage. And so they're known as the sons of thunder, and incidentally, I'm thunder. Amen. And so we want to uh, expose those preachers, the ones that are not pastoring, and even the ones that are pastoring. We, we have our first speaker that is a very renowned pastor in the city of Houston. Uh, he pastors the Houston Praise and Worship. Amen. And so I'm going to ask that you would receive our first preacher that will initiate the prayer bowl, amen, the whole bowl today in the person of the Bishop Frank Rush. Won't you receive our son, uh, Frank Rush, who is son number 70, amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Praise the Lord and hallelujah. It's great to be here at the Horror Bowl. Come on, say amen. amen. God is good, not sometimes, but what? But all the time and all the time. God is good. We ought to get up with some energy this morning. Amen. We ought to make a joyful noise. Amen. Enter his gates with complaining and come into his courts with fussing. Oh, the words say, enter his gates with what? How many of y'all are thankful to be here today? Give, give God a hand clap. He, we made it. He brought us through one more time, one more opportunity. Amen. And we thank God for Pastor Smith, to me, still the greatest pastor in America. Amen. How many years? Ninety what? Ninety-three years young. Sister Edda, I'm telling you, I thank God for my pastor. Y'all give the Lord a great hand clap for Pastor Smith. Amen. And to all the Pastor Smith, giving thanks to God, Pastor Smith, all the ministers on the rostrum, and my dear brother like no other. Amen. We thank God for all of you. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, look at somebody. Say, neighbor. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord one more time. Oh, I thank God for that. God has given me an opportunity um, for over 30 years to come. I apologize if I didn't get the memo about 7 versus 730, but I'm glad to be here. Amen? And I didn't come alone. Those of you that came with us, would you at least stand? Thank you, Jesus. Give them a hand. Mount Horeb from Houston Praise and Worship Center, where the praise never stops. Amen. You may be seated. You may know this young man, the family of this young man on the front row. This is Brother Nathan Valley. That's my alma bearer there. His brother Matthew Valley, long-term member of this church. Amen. Thank God for Minister Hiawatha Jackson. Y'all say amen. amen. And I thank God for my brother and how my son He's the Reverend Ara Christian Tucker. You may know him as Chris Tucker. You may know his mom, Sister Barbara Tucker. And I tell you, she is an anointed singer. And he is, listen, this is an Emmy Award winning young man. And I want him to at least come and say hello to you this morning. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap for all of them. And this my brother. Listen to the voice. Thank you, Bishop. And good morning, Mount Horeb. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I always consider it a privilege to be in God's house no matter where I may be. And a special privilege here in Fourth Ward. My grandmother used to live right across the street on the corner of O'Neill and Valentine across the street from Old Mexico. Some of y'all might know where that is. So I know these stomping grounds. I have been in this church many times over the years. And I also consider it a very special privilege to be in the presence of Pastor Samuel H. Smith, wherever I may encounter him. He is the youngest old man I've ever met in my life. So thank you very much for the opportunity, not only to be here for the Horror Bowl, but to witness the word that Bishop will bring forth on this morning to ignite this Horror Bowl 2024. I hope you all are excited and ignited because we're about to hear a word from the Lord. So may God bless and keep each and every one of you is my prayer. And I also saw your uh, advertisement about the birthdays in the month of January. I'm a January baby. I'll celebrate my 62nd birthday on January 25th. So again, I'm excited and glad to be here. May God bless and keep each and every one of you. The next voice that you will hear is that of the Bishop Frank a rush of the Houston Praise and Worship Center, where the praise never stops. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. We were negotiating with <laughs> the Reverend R. Christian Tucker to come minister a song, but he decided that's not his lane for today. 
and he has fulfilled his request to say my request of him to just say thank you and hello to you guys. Somebody say amen. amen. But I do have a song request, and that's hopefully my pastor will join me this morning. I grew up in Waco, Texas, and my dad was a pastor of um, several churches, but uh, mostly out in what we call the country. And they didn't have a lot of running water. They had outdoor toilets and all that kind of stuff. They didn't have air conditioning, but we sure had the Lord. Amen. Amen. And we love ministering in song. And my mom would make us boys to sing together. And one of those songs we sang was, Where Could I Go But To Who? Living below in this old sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Oh, striving alone to face temptation sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Where could I go? Oh, where should I go? Seeking, seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, seeking a friend. Save me in the end. Where could I go? Tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Give my help a hand here. <laughs> He's a great singer. Thank you. To you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the elders of this church. Uh, you, my family, happy new year to all of you. God has blessed us to see another year. Come on, say amen. Yeah, yeah. And we're happy to be here at the Horror Bowl. May we just bow for a quick second. Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus. Yeah. How we thank you, we bless you, we praise your name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised. Oh, how we thank you today, God, for your grace and for your mercy. Now we pray, Father, simply that you would take us down deep into your well of wisdom, that we can come up rightly dividing the word of truth. Speak to us, mostly speak through us. Use us for your glory and use us for your praise. And we'll be careful to give your name. Somebody say all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12, as we stand for the reading of the word, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 you would find these few words. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We can stop right there. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, Bishop Rush is going to speak from this familiar subject that Pastor Smith preached many years ago, looking in the wrong direction. Looking in the wrong direction. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, whatever direction you're looking is vitally important. Where you are going or headed at any time of your life is normally determined by wherever you are looking. Amen? 
not only that, but your mind is consumed. I wish I had some help here today. It's consumed normally and determined by where you're looking. In other words, your mind and your eyes are tied together. Wherever you're looking is where your focus will be. Your body will follow your mind. Say it. My body will follow my mind. Your actions are governed by your mind and body. Say it. My actions are governed by my mind and my body. Your actions come from your habits. Say it. My actions come from my habits. And say your habits form your character. Say it. Your habits, my habits, come on, my habits form my character. Say it. My character forms my life. Come on, say it. My character forms my life. And say my, my life forms my career. Come on, say it. My life forms my career. And come on, say my career forms my legacy. Say it. My career forms my legacy. And say it. My legacy, come on, say it, and impacts my family and those who follow me. What happens? My legacy impacts my family and those who follow me. Brothers and sisters, all this, listen to me, is originally determined and impacted by where you're looking. And we need to look in the right direction. So my question to you today, and God's question to all of us, is are you looking in the wrong direction? The writer of Hebrews, brothers and sisters, some say it's Paul, some say it's Apollo, some say it's Clement, most just say it's unknown, it's okay. But the writer informs us exactly where we ought to be looking. They don't leave it up to your imagination to wonder and to think and to be confused and to be fearful about where you ought to be what? Looking. He says... We ought to be looking to Jesus, the author, come on, and the what? And the finisher of our faith. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, are you looking in the wrong direction? Let, let, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it for just a second because, uh, see, most of us need to understand wherever we're looking the most, it will determine the direction of our lives. Come on, say amen. So many people are looking at Hollywood stars. Amen? In one sense, that's not bad if the people you're looking to have sacrificed much, have worked hard, and accomplished great things. If, you, if you're following somebody, you're looking at them, and they're doing great things, that's not bad in one sense, but often... The problem is that when you see the glamour and glitz, that's all you're getting is the glamour and the glitz on the what side? On the outside. And there is no firm foundation for their lives. Their public image is glamour and what? Glitz. But their private Oh, inside the house problem or image is gloom and doom. You've heard Cat Williams talk about it. Come on, somebody. You've heard all this latest discussion about what's going on in Hollywood. You've got somebody that's willing to tell the truth that sometimes what you see with all the proper hairline and the flat top and the this, that, and the other is just a wig. You are seeing something that looks good on the outside but has nothing to it on the inside. I think Jesus yeah. talked about it being yeah. like a white sepulcher or not, yeah. but on the inside is full of dead men's yeah. bones. Yeah. Even if they have a family, yeah. it's often extreme turmoil, yeah. infighting, yeah. drugs, homosexuality. Yeah. Daddy can't decide if he's going to be male today or female, y'all don't hear me, tomorrow. 
It's children having children. No one can stay married beyond a few years. It's like the TV show that says, as the world burns, I mean turns, <laughs> you'll catch it. And yet millions of people follow these stars every day. Come on. What, what's the thing? We look at Instagram and what? TikTok and some Twitter and X or whatever it's called. You, you, we're looking to me, we're looking, Jesus is saying, in the wrong direction. Why are they looking, Sister Edna? They're looking because they want something to fulfill, Sister Jackson, their lives. They want to know how to live their lives. Come on, say amen. But the Bible says these rich and famous Hollywood and sports stars are like what I just said in Matthew 23 and 27. For you are like whitened tombs which outwardly appear beautiful but inwardly are full of what? Dead men's bones. I say to you again, people are often looking in the wrong direction. Well, some, if they're not looking at the stars, they're looking at people for money. And riches. They think being rich will make them happy and have a good life. So they look to the wealthy of society, people like the Rothschilds. Y'all heard of them? The Rockefellers, Elon Musk, billionaires like Michael Jordan and Jay-Z and others. Now, in one sense, that's okay. I mean, if, if you're trying to see how to make money and they're making money the right way, I don't have a problem with that. God doesn't have a problem with that. So, but again, you know, there's only one flaw or problem with a lot of money comes a lot of problems <laughs> and a lot of, you said it, responsibilities. Yes, even the Bible says, 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that you would what? Yeah. Prosper and be in what? Good health, even as your what? Soul prospers. But it also says the love of money is the root, come on, of all evil. It also says, what does it profit a man or a woman to what? Gain the whole world and yet lose our souls. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we're looking in the wrong direction. We're looking for the rich and famous. We're, yeah. we're looking for those that got, uh, uh, you know, power in, in the natural world there. Yeah. But God is saying to us, maybe you're just looking in the what? Wrong direction as you try to feel the stuff of your life. Amen? Well, you would think, if I can't look to people, and if I can't look to wealth and riches, maybe I can look at myself. That sounds good, okay? But the Bible says, come on, man's heart is deceitful above all things and not just wicked, but desperately wicked. Come on, we, we might as well fess up. If we're looking at ourselves, sometimes we're looking at flawed creatures. And the church said, amen. Because, listen, listen, our hearts can lead us in the wrong, what? Direction. When we, if we're looking at self, brothers and sisters, we're in a heap of trouble. So trusting yourself to lead yourself to the good life doesn't sound very promising. Amen. Because if you look to your past, you will be discouraged. Why is that? Because all have what? Sin and come what? Short of the glory of God. Are y'all still with me? Help me, Holy Ghost. If your man looks to the future, he could be depressed because no one knows their future. Amen. If a man looks inward toward his heart, he is desperately what? Wicked. Come on, say amen. So the only real direction we can look is up. Do I have a witness here? We need to look to Jesus, the what? Author and the 
finisher of our faith. I'm almost through. Just give me a few minutes. Come on. Why Jesus? Because he's the alpha, come on, and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. And by the way, he's everything in between. Amen. He's our sustainer. We went to bed last night because of him. He kept us all night long. He woke us up this morning. He put us in our right mind. I wish I had a witness here. Because of him, we got running in our feet. We got clapping in our hands. We got joy bells in our hearts. It's nobody but Jesus. Somebody say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody if you're sick, oh, help me today. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's the God of our healing. Come on, say amen. If you need peace today, he's Jehovah Shalom. Is there anybody here that needs some peace in here today? You know things are falling apart all around you, and you need some peace, the peace that passes all understanding. The only way you're going to find that is in Jesus. Somebody's battling something today. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our shield. And he's our banner. Come on, say amen. There's some fights you can't fight by yourself. You're going to have to depend on God to fight it for you. And he said, if you just stand still, you will see the salvation of the Lord. We're looking to Jesus. God in flesh. He is the very God. Yeah. You don't need to look to the wealthy. Yeah. You don't need to look to the rich. You don't yeah. need to look to yeah. Hollywood. You don't need to look to the sports stars. And you sure don't need yeah. to look at yeah. yourself. We need to look to, to Jesus. Jesus. That's, all right. That's the right, yes, sir. That's all right. Yes, direction. Yes, sir. I wish I had a witness here. Yes, sir. If you need righteousness, you know you're wrong. Yes, you know you're done wrong. You know you need to get right. You need Jehovah sit canoe. Yeah. He's yeah. God, your righteousness. Yeah. Maybe you say, but I've been mistreated. I need justice. Yeah. He's yeah. Elohe misfat. He's the God of justice. Perhaps you need forgiveness. Yeah. He's Elohe Selakot. He's the God of forgiveness. I wish I had a witness here. We need Jesus. Yeah. I'll just wrap it up. I could give you 20, 30 more, but I'm just saying. Yeah. you All he right. will do he'll make a way yeah. out of no way. way he's the great I am yeah. whatever's in your way watch this now he'll move it out the way hello somebody if you're fighting somebody the Holy Ghost says you're fighting something right now you're trying to figure out what to do what what do I say? Which way do I go? What steps do I take? What moves do I to make? I'm here to tell you, make sure you're looking in the right direction. Where is that, Bishop? What are you saying? I'm saying it real simple. Look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Father, I thank you. I bless you and I praise your name. I pray that somebody got something out of this little message this morning today. That we can look to Jesus, the God, our God in flesh, who died for our sins, who got up on that third day. And with his stripes, we are healed. We're delivered and we're set free. He's given us all power. He's released to our hands. Now it's our turn to show somebody else the way, the right direction. In Jesus' name we pray, they all say it. Amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Let us say amen. Come on. Let us say amen. amen. Say amen like you mean it. Amen. Amen.
God bless Bishop Rush. We thank God for the message uh, and the inspirational message. I had forgotten about the sermon looking in the wrong direction. That was a long time ago. Amen. And he just refreshed my memory. And I want to thank Bishop Rush for letting the Lord use him. Amen. 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 And the song that he uh, started off singing, Where Can I Go But To The Lord? Amen. There is a, the second verse, say, Neighbors are fine. I love them, everyone. We get along in sweet accord. But when my soul need manna from above, where can I go but to the Lord? Amen. And uh, he called upon me to help him to sing, and he caught me off guard. Amen. Uh, I was singing bass. <laughs> uh, uh, trying to catch up with Bishop Rush. Where are we? Horrible. Come on, where are we? Horrible. Horrible. Amen. You know, my soul uh, was uplifted uh, when I saw one of my sons walk in. I called him my son. I know he did not confess his call to preach under me. But I can remember when he was, when he was a little boy uh, and we were, we were uh, in the state convention and uh, my task was preaching on the streets. And uh, I gather a group of young persons. Uh, in that group was Ralph West. Uh, in that group was uh, Bishop uh, Dixon. In that group was uh, Sonny. Uh, Adolf, and uh, in that group also was uh, uh, Robert, uh, the, uh, may I, any, anyway, yeah, yeah, there you go. Anyway, my soul was uplifted the other day when I went to one of the prayer bowls at Loud Unity and I saw this young man. Uh, he refers to me as Papa Smith. Uh, I was a papa to all of them and I want you to see uh, this young man. His father was a dynamic preacher. His brother is now pastoring in Beaumont. And uh, I, I just want you to see him. Uh, whatever the Holy Spirit lay upon his mind to do, feel free to do it. And won't you receive, Reverend, I say, Sonny Adolf. However, it does need to be understood that we love your pastor. Uh, we'll never, ever forget while I was struggling with the call to preach 
uh, he would come into the grocery store where I worked over at Bennington and Jensen, sharp as a tack every day, uh, wearing a, a, a fish around his neck on a chain. And I, 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 I actually had the nerve, because how close our, our, we were with our families, I, I grabbed his, his fish on his chain and asked him, what's this about? He said, once you're caught, you've got to be a catcher. <laughs> Just for a moment, by the way, uh, we've been known as the helicopter, so you don't have to worry about me being long at all. Uh, in, the, in the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, um, you'll find... Uh, in the fifth chapter, um, a word from the Lord. First Thessalonians uh, chapter five, um, verse eighteen says this: "In everything." Give thanks. Yeah. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, in everything. give thanks. For this is the will of God yeah. in Christ Jesus concerning you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. J just for a few moments, and I do mean a few, so I hope you brought some amens to use them right quickly. Uh, what? Who? That's the subject of the sermon. <laughs> Grateful to, 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 to be with, for my wife to be with me this morning. We determined midweek that we were coming to Mount Horeb this morning, knew nothing about a horrible Pastor Smith. Um, didn't, didn't expect to preach or anything, but I'm glad to have Sister Karen Adolph present with, with me this morning. Uh, I... Um, Spent 31 years as pastor of the First Missionary Baptist Church in Gulfport, Mississippi. Was led of the Lord to come home uh, and uh, actually went through a, a divorce and thought I'd never, ever marry again. But you see Sister Adolph sitting there, ever so grateful for her presence with me this morning. What? Why? Ooh, I like to call this my eavesdropping sermon. Do you, do you ever eavesdrop? Amen. I happened to grow up in a time of, of uh, I know we got cell phones now, but back in the day, we actually had a party line. Uh, a party line where we shared telephone numbers with na a neighbor. And uh, uh, Mama would oftentimes have to, t have to get on the phone and say, Dorothy, I know you're still there. Hang up that phone. Uh, uh, but um, but whenever you've done any eavesdropping, you might have heard someone else saying, "What? Why? Yeah. Who? Yeah. Well, I've got I've, I've I've got something to tell you. The answer to all three of those questions are right there in the text. The answer to all three questions are right there in the text. What? Yeah. The what in the text is that. We are to have an attitude of gratitude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are not told that we have to yes, be sir. thankful yes, for everything, but we are told in everything, give thanks. Yeah. In everything, give thanks. Yeah. Boil that all down. Here's what that means. Yeah. That we are to have an attitude oh, of gratitude. We yes, ought to be yes, thankful people. Amen, amen. I don't know what you, you ought to be thankful for, but I'm thankful yes, he woke sir. me up this morning, yes, started me on my way, yes, gave me a reasonable portion of health and strength. Yes, I have so much to be thankful for. We ought to have an attitude of gratitude. That's what, 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 what in everything give thanks. Why? Yeah. It is the will yeah. of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I've, I've, Pastor Smith, I had a chance to go to school. And uh, in school, uh, we wrestled with the will of God. Yes, sir. Yes, amen. Sir. Amen. Yes, amen. Sir.
saying? They're, they're, the various ones with their various ideas about what, what is the will of God. Well, that's, that's simple. The word of God is the will of God. Why does a, a brown cow eat green grass under a blue sky and give white milk the will of God? God's will is what makes him happy. Yes, sir. Now, here's the problem with that, though, yes, that so many of us do things and live in lives that make God unhappy and then expect to be happy. Yes, sir. Lord, have mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, if you want to be happy, yes, sir. make God yes, sir. live in a fashion that makes God happy. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. What? In everything, give thanks. Why? It's the will of God. Who? You know what I noticed way a long time ago? That whenever you point one finger at somebody else, you got three more pointed back at you. Amen, 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 amen. I, what? In everything, give thanks. Why? It's the will of God. Who? Concerning you. Amen, amen. All three of those in the text. Yes, sir. Amen. They're all right there. Yes, sir. Concerning who? You. Yes, sir. Amen, amen. When I point my finger at you, it's pointed back at me. Three more. And you know what? I don't know about you, but I've got so much to thank God for. My soul was on its way to a burning hell. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I have so much to thank God for. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. everything. Why? It's the will of God. <laughs> Who? You. Man, there was a commercial, I hate to admit, listening to a beer commercial. But they, 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 they said this one yeah. is for you. Yes, sir. What? Yes, sir. In everything. Yes, Why? Sir. Yes, sir. It's the will of God. Yes, sir. Who? Yes, sir. concerning Bless you. Bless you, sir. Oh, Lord. Bless you, sir. Bless you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, what? What? <laughs> now, I, I know you, you were not expecting that, but God knew what to do and when to do it. Amen. And uh, I want to thank Sonny for not turning me down, but uh, that you would hear his, his voice. And uh, his brother in Beaumont, John, Adolf is a powerful preacher, but he's not, he can't come up to, to this Adolf. Amen. And uh, neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along. Sweet accord, but when my soul needs manna from above, tell me where shall I go but to the Lord? Where can I go? Oh, where can I go? Seek and a refuge. For my soul, need a friend 
to save me in the end. Tell me where can I go but to the Lord. Amen. Where are we? Come on, where are we? We are in a preacher thorn in the whole abode. Amen. If you came for preaching, you come to the right place because preaching is what this bowl is all about. So won't you receive our next preacher who uh, will be uh, shocked and yet not shocked, but I told them when we assemble in this day, have a sermon ready because you don't know what Pastor Sfinger is going to point at this time. So, Reverend Shiner, you're on. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. For we are heirs of salvation. We're purchased of God. We're born of his spirit and washed in his blood. I don't know about you, but that's good news. It's indeed a humbling privilege to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus the Christ. It's a humbling experience to experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. It's a privilege to have a divine understanding that he gave his life in your place and mine. That's a privilege. I'm happy, but I'm saddened. Because so many take for granted the privilege of the redemptive work of Calvary. I'm excited to be included in the counsel of God's will, but I'm also brokenhearted because so many take it for granted. I go through life on a day-to-day -day basis and been places that will blow, blow some of y'all natural minds. If you knew my story, you would say, oh, but only God. I've experienced hurts, pains, fears, insecurities, been kicked out, lied on, scandalized, uh, you name it, I've experienced it. But not on the level that our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, experienced pain on my behalf and yours. We complain about an ingrown toenail, but let me share something with you. What happened on Calvary's cross is the most inhumane form of suffering ever known unto humanity. Before we get into our text, I must let you know that Jesus the Christ was a human being 
as you and I are today. Even though he was God, he divested himself and put on flesh, filthy, vile flesh. And if you would get alone in the corridors where you really live, in the secret place where you don't talk about, and look at yourself, you'll see how wicked, perverted, and vile you were before you experienced the work at Calvary. It's time out for superficial Christianity. It's time out for being a churchy. It's time to be the church. To be the church is to use the power of God to meet the needs of others on the level of their needs. Time is limited. If you will, let's go to Romans 1, 16, I believe it. Romans, the first chapter and the 16th verse. The Apostle Paul is saying in that 16th verse that for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. You may be seated if you can. For the sake of topic, why do we preach? The beloved elect gentleman in Christ, he used that why. And any time you hear why, it's a question that demands an answer. Where are we at? The horror bowl is a preaching goal. A preaching bowl. Why do we preach? We preach because preaching the gospel of Jesus the Christ is the power of God unto salvation. When we deal with that word power, from the Greek it's called dunamis, but in simplicity, power is the energy to exercise right. God has predestined, preordained, preassigned before it was a when, a was, and a how this day. The bench you sitting on, the wood that's there, while it was in the earth, God designed for that specific piece to shape that bench. The cloth, whoever tapestry and sewed it and done all that, it was predestined for you and I to enjoy the comfort of the bench on this day, to understand that preaching is the power of God unto salvation. In other words, the power of preaching has power to rescue. The power of preaching has power in it to heal hurts, to remove pain, but better than that, to give you that the necessary to stand pain and manage pain. Oh, All right, y'all not with me. I was at a bowl last Sunday, I think, the first Sunday. I was sitting there with a toothache. I got there late just in time to catch the last preacher with a toothache. But I'm so grateful unto the gospel of Jesus Christ and the Christ of the gospel that he gave me the endurance to manage the pain. I was painting but couldn't nobody tell because I was rejoicing in the fact that yes, he died. Yeah, he was buried and yes, he rose, but he done it for me. Why we preach? We preach because on a day-to-day -day basis, 
Just because it's not going on in your life and in my life, uh, every time we share the gospel of Jesus the Christ, the power of the Holy Ghost begin to do works down in the corridors of hearts that you and I can't even imagine. So let's be careful that we don't take the preacher or the preaching or the gospel for granted. I've heard people say bad things about the preacher, but what they really don't understand that the preacher is the anointed one. He's packing, he's embodied with the power of God. In other words, the power of the resurrection of Jesus the Christ is operating through him. Right now, some of y'all, even in video land, you was miserable before the preaching of the gospel. But since the gospel is being preached, you are experiencing the Prince of Peace. I don't know about you, but I pass folks on a day-to-day -day basis that don't have peace. I know professing believers that don't have peace. I know people that possess a uh, professed Christ, but he's not living down, way down on the inside of them. He's not their Lord. He can't wake them up at 4 o'clock and 5 o'clock in the morning and tell them to go do this and go do that, and it don't make sense, but the preacher get up anyhow and go do it even though it don't make sense. 90% of the time, the preacher is moving on behalf of another because the preacher got it made. The preacher can sit on his blessed assurance and say, I got mine, I'm, I'm eternally secure. The power of God rests not only on me but in me so I can just keep it to myself. But if he's a preacher of the gospel, he can't keep it to himself. Because where others see people as alive, Pastor Rush mentioned it, those that like dead men walking. In other words, the preachers see the death when folks don't even know they dying. Folks don't even know they in need of the resurrection power. But the preacher began to release the gospel. The gospel began to permeate the hearts of the people. Before you know it, those that were empty became filled. Then when they became filled, they began to proclamate the word of God. They reached places you and I can't reach. They go places you and I can't go. A witness for the Lord. Every witness has the Holy Spirit, but the preacher have a communion with God that folks that's not preachers just don't have. In other words, the preacher of the gospel, God visited him in a way that he don't visit others. As a matter of fact, the preacher makes sacrifices, especially if he got a family that others don't have to because sometimes children don't understand. Daddy, you spending more time with them than you are with me. You always around that church. You always doing this, but what about us? Wifey wants some wifey time. You know, some of that secret holy time that husband and wife have together so they can enter the, I can't go into that like that now. But what I'm saying is that you don't know what it costs to be a preacher, what it takes to be a preacher, the mocking and the scoffing, and the reason why the preacher do what he do. Because over 2,000 years ago, God himself stepped out of eternity into time, disrobed his divinity, put on flesh like a man. He went down the corridors of time and the dusty shores of Galilee. He went from town to town healing those that was oppressed of the devil. Why we preach is because demonic activity and satanic suggestion is ruling and ruling. But I stopped by to let you know that this Jesus that we preach about, he subdued principalities and powers. He disrupted kingdom. 
that Jesus that came as a man, that was tempted as a man, but never ever sinned, lived 33 years, went about doing good, lifting oppression. They took him up a hill. And this morning when you came through the door, if you came through the front door, you came up some steps and you came up to a mount and it's the Mount Horeb, but it's more and more and more like Mount Zion. In other words, the city of the living God, where it's an innumerable host of angels that's all around right now, where the glory of God reveal himself. And I can almost see his face. This Jesus we preach. They took him up the hill called Calvary. They hung him high because if you remember in the book of Matthew, it says that glory to God in the highest and goodwill to all men. For the tabernacle of God is with men. He was standing between heaven and earth. So you and I can become the tabernacle of God. Not only did they do that, they nailed his hands so your hands and mine can labor in his vineyard to let others know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's the power unto salvation. They nailed his feet so we can no longer walk crooked, but walk straight. We can walk accordingly to the word of God. I heard the preacher say that in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. But the only way you can tell the Lord thank you is to be obedient to his word. You can say it with your mouth, but you could be disobedient with your heart. You just a lie and the truth is not in you. This same Jesus that took a beating in your place in the place of your vileness, your wickedness, all the sins that you committed so you could be healed. Not only that, he died. Oh, yes, he died. He died, he died. He died as sure as anyone that has ever died. But then he took the debt so you and I don't have to take the second debt. Why we preach, we preach the gospel because we want your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Now, when we say the Lamb, we talking about he who shed his blood. But it, that blood that he shed is cleansing blood. Be thou clean now in the name of Jesus. The reason why we preach the gospel, talk about he died. Because he died. And one of these days, you're going to die. Oh, yes, you're going to die. But you don't have to stay dead because he stayed in the grave. Three days and three nights. And on the third day morning, he rose again. We preach because we want you to be in the resurrection. We don't want you to perish. We don't want you to go to hell. And the Lord don't either. I don't know whether you know it or not. There was love hanging on Calvary. Jesus loved you. This I know. Not only because the Bible tells me so, but I know he's moving over the corridors of your life right now. I know he's showing his love toward you right now. And bless his holy name. But not only did he rise, I must tell you one of these days, he going to part the eastern sky. Every eye going to be holding. Everybody going to see him. And we going to be forevermore with the Lord. I got my hurts. I got my pains. I got my insecurity. I got my trouble. But don't worry about me. I'm all right because that same Jesus, he walked with me. He talk with me. He tells me that I'm his own. Therefore, I encourage you to rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice. For I take my seat. Here's a commission. 
And any time the commission is given by the proper authority, the power is available. Not only do you rejoice in the Lord, but let your moderation, let your lifestyle in Christ be known unto all men, because the day of the Lord is at hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Certainly, certainly, preaching was all in him, all over him, all through him, amen, and he couldn't help but preach. His subject was why we preach, but you saw why. The anointing of the Lord. Amen. When the Lord anoint you, you get that. I can't help it. Amen. And uh, we want to thank God for Reverend China. We say to him, keep on doing what you're doing because what you're doing will pay off after a while. Amen. Where are we? Amen. Amen. Suddenly we are grateful to God for all of the gathering of the, of the preachers. Won't you receive our next preacher as he come and share with us the word of God in the person of Reverend Jermaine Johnson. Amen. Shall we pray? Gracious God, our Father in heaven, we come in the mighty and powerful name of your son, Jesus. God, we come just wanting to thank you we come just to praise your holy and righteous name. Father, we ask now for your preaching power through your Holy Spirit. We ask that your glory be manifested among us. I pray, Father, that you will move me out of the way. Allow your Holy Spirit to speak to your people. Have thine own way. And Father, we be ever so careful to give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Certainly we are grateful this morning uh, to be able to come before you uh, with the word. I'm so honored, uh, first uh, giving obedience and thanks unto God and to Pastor Smith. Uh, can we give a hand clap of praise to God for <laughs> Pastor Smith? who has labored uh, for the Lord uh, so many years and has over 400 sons in the ministry. And uh, we already know that uh, who his number one is, uh, but um, I didn't come to be his number one. I'm just happy to be one. And so, uh, we praise God to be here uh, with all of these preachers. I, I'm always humbled uh, to be in this fraternity because I always feel that I'm less uh, than the least of the apostles. That's what Paul said. But I do know that the Lord is with me and um, that his Holy Spirit will empower me even in the midst of uh, my weaknesses. Um, there is a word uh, from the Lord, and I just want you to uh, be patient with me. Pastor Smith has already established a theme for 2024. And uh, if you were here, that theme was get into the flow in 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I want to continue with that theme with just a small addendum 
because it's one thing to get with or in the flow, but it's a whole nother thing to remain in the flow. And so my theme for this year is commitment. And we're going to preach from that theme of being committed. If you will, uh, turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 5. I solicit your prayers early. My brother Walter Junkin says, man, if you... If you tell me what your sermon is, I know all those scriptures you quote. I can tell you what scriptures you go quote. And we had a good laugh because I said, man, listen, I don't even know what scriptures I'm going to (laughs) quote. So that's good if you know the scriptures. John chapter 5. And we will uh, start at verse... Number eight, John five, we'll do John five, eight and nine, and we'll drop down to verses 13 and 14. If you're there, say amen. 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 Listen, the eighth verse says, Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Verse 13. And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away. A multitude being in that place. Verse number 14. Afterward, Jesus finded him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. For a subject I would like to use by way of a question, are you committed to the Father's business in your life? You may be seated. Are you committed to the Father's business in your life? spent some time studying and I looked up the definition of commitment, one that I think that um, I'm able to get across with some clarity and simplicity, and it says commitment is when you're loyal. Commitment is when you are dedicated. Commitment is when you have made a decision. Commitment is not half-hearted, it's whole-hearted. But I like the last synonym for commitment. And that said, all in. Are you committed? to the Father's business in your life. Before we answer that question, one must determine who's their father. Um, You see, one would assume because we are all gathered here this morning in the church house that we can all collectively 
say the first two words of the model prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Our Father. But um, Jesus makes it clear that um, everybody is not a child of God. Uh, Jesus makes it clear as he talks to the Pharisees in the 8th chapter of John, right around that 44th 44 verse. That's my first scripture. And he tells them that you can't understand what I'm saying. You can't hear what I'm telling you. Because you are of your father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. Uh, he, he, he was a liar, and the truth was not in him. That's who their father was. And not only are you of your fa father, the devil, he says that you desire to do his will. And Jesus had to set him straight because as a little boy, Jesus, at the age of 12 years old, had already knew who his father was. I'm not talking about Joseph. I'm talking about your spiritual father. Because when you read in Luke chapter 2, uh, right around that 49th verse, when the Bible says that Mary and Joseph had went to Jerusalem to celebrate a feast. In other words, they were training up a child in the way that he should go. They were letting him know about the religious feast. The Bible says that they traveled from Nazareth of Galilee all the way down to Jerusalem. And after the feast, Mary and Joseph went a day's journey. They had got to Galilee on their way to Nazareth, only to realize that Jesus was not with them. First nugget of the sermon this morning, make sure that you don't make it home and find out that Jesus is not with you. The Bible says that Mary and Joseph went back looking for Jesus. And when they found him, he was in the temple. He was teaching, and they were amazed at this 12-year-old boy teaching the scriptures to the doctors in the philosophy of the word, philosophers of the word. And when they found him, they said, why? Did you worry your father and I? And Jesus said unto them, why were you worried about me? Wish not did you know that I must be about my father's business. And the Bible says that Mary and Joseph didn't understand what he was saying. But Jesus was declaring to them at an early age that he had realized who his father was. And he realized that his father was God himself. And uh, if you don't know who your father is, the Bible says that all you have to do is look for the Lord. And the Lord will help you find your spiritual father. As we look at this text today, that fifth chapter of John, and still being committed to our father's business in our lives. Because you can be about the father's business, but the father has some business specifically for your life. As a matter of fact, the prophet Jeremiah says, second scripture quoted, Jeremiah chapter 1 and 5, the prophet says that the Lord knew him before he was in 
his mother's womb. What I'm trying to get you to see is that the Lord has a purpose for your life. He has some business for your life, and that's why he made you. And when we look at John chapter 5, the Bible says that there was a man at the pool called Bethesda. He was there for 38 something years. The Bible says that at this pool, there were lame, paralyzed, and uh, sick folk there, uh, all trying to get into the pool to get healed. And the Bible says that Jesus walked up to this man who was there for 38 years. He had lost all of his hope. He couldn't find anyone to place him inside of the pool. I don't know about you, but when I look at the text, you have all of these people that were getting healed at the pool of Bethesda. And you can't tell me that not one, after they had gotten healed, could have came back and got this man and put him in the pool. I declare today that's an indictment on the church about the Father's business in each and every one of our lives. Uh, the Lord has saved us, and he saved us for a purpose. It ain't that you have it all and don't want to share it with anybody else. But the Bible says that this man said, I have no man or friend to put me in to the pool. I don't know about you, but you might not have friends who stick with you through thick and thin. Family may have turned their back on you, but how many know that we have a friend in Jesus? When you're down to nothing, thank you, Uncle Bill, God is up to something. And Jesus met him in his helpless and hopeless situation. And he asked him a question. Do you want to be healed? Do you want to be made whole? And when he asked him that question, he said no more. All he told him was to get up. Now when he got up, he wasn't healed. He had to get up by faith. And when he got up by faith, he realized that he had activity in his limbs. He realized that the word of God had healed his whole body. And as a matter of fact, he picked up his bed and he began to walk. And even though it was the Sabbath, when you're not supposed to work, when you're not supposed to walk. He didn't care because he was listening to the one that had healed him. I stopped by to tell you, the same one or the same word that heals you should be the same one, the same word that rules you. You don't have to worry about what other people say. If the Lord said it, <laughs> That settles it. Just listen to his voice. <laughs> Let him lead, God and direct you. I don't know about you, but when I look at this man at the pool called Bethesda, he was there for 38 years. Seemed like all hope was gone. Seemed like everything had passed away. But how many of you know <laughs> All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus, and he'll be right there. He's never late. He's always on time. He may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. This man got up, and he went to the temple. That's what the scripture said. And Jesus found him in the temple. When the Lord has touched you, 
you ought to make your way to the house of the Lord and give God praise for all that he has done. If he's done anything for you, you need to make your way to the house of the Lord and let him know how good he has been. Has he done anything for you? Has he healed you? Has he provided for you? Has he covered you? Has he protected you? Has he made any ways out of no ways? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus came into my life and I dare you to sit on your do nothing and not give him praise. I'll give him praise all the way from the back seat, all the way to the pulpit, because he has been so good to me. And that's what the, the Bible says, that Jesus found him in the temple, giving thanks unto God. But the next thing that he said, come on, walk with me to that 14th verse. Say, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said unto him, behold, thou art made whole. In other words, he was telling them after you have been healed. Don't forget about your healing. That word behold says see. In other words, remember what I have done for you. And when the Lord has healed you, we ought to remember what God has done for us. We ought to remember that he has cleansed us and made us righteous. It ain't no reason for us to be coming in church with a frown on your face. Sometimes you want to speak to me, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you got an attitude, and sometimes you don't. I got confused. I don't understand how people who've been touched by the Lord can come into church with a nasty attitude. Don't want to speak to me today. Don't want to shake my hand tomorrow. But I tell you, you all to remember that God has cleansed you and cleansed you from all unrighteousness. And you ought to be thankful unto him. And you ought to want to walk right. You ought to want to do right. You ought to want to love right. If you just remember what the Lord has done to you. Last verse. And he says, behold, after you remember that you've been made whole. He says, sin no more. That's the crux of the message. Are you committed to the Father's business in your life? Jesus didn't say sin as little as possible. Jesus didn't say sin just a little bit. Jesus says sin no more. In other words, stop sinning. In other words, give up that old life. I've touched and I've healed you. Not sin just a little bit. Not sin just a little. But sin no more. In other words, I've touched you. I've healed you. And uh, if you don't want anything worse to happen to you, be obedient and committed to my word. There's a word in criminal justice called recidivism. That word means that the person that has been in prison nine times out of ten when they get out. The Bible, not the Bible, uh, statistics say that 70% of them go back. Only to go back to the same thing that the Lord has delivered you from. But Jesus told him to sin no more. Don't go back. Stay committed to the Father's will in your life. And why would I stay committed 
Because God has a purpose for your life. Proverbs 11, 30 says that the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. That's why he healed you. That's why he saved you. And that's why he says sin no more. But there's another reason why that you should be committed. Just what the preachers have said all this morning. When you leave here, you may have had some plans to go back to doing what you were doing. But remember that Jesus said the word to sin no more. And why should I sin no more? Well, it's right there in Isaiah chapter 53. Because of all that he has done for you and me. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, right around that fifth verse, about all that he has done for you and me. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace is upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. I don't know about you, but he did all that for me. And one Friday on a hill called Calvary, this Jesus, the same Jesus that met the man at the pool of Bethesda, went to Calvary's hill and lent his hands to the nails and his feet to the spike just for me and you. And he warned him, don't lift me up. He said, because if I, if I be lifted up, I'm going to draw all men unto me. Is there anybody here that knows about his drawing power? Is there anybody here that know my Jesus? Is there anybody here that know my Lord? I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. He heard my cry, and he pitied my every groan. I'm committed to the Father's business in my life, and I don't want to keep him dead. He was buried, but he got up that Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning, he got up, and that's the reason why we're here this Sunday. We, we don't worship on Saturday, the Sabbath. This is our commemorative day because we worship the resurrected Jesus. And he resurrected to send back the comforter that we don't have to sin no more. He said, I will give you power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And when you get that power, you can walk right. You can talk right. You can love right. You can do right. And not only that, you can be committed to the Father's business in your life. God bless you. God bless you, Reverend. Jermaine Johnson, you know, I don't know about you all, but uh, seemingly this particular year is centered around salvation. Amen. And it should, every time we assemble, in the house of prayer, our assembly ought to be earmarked with salvation. Amen. Because if you're saved, you want to see somebody else saved. And if you're saved, you want to see not somebody else, but see all men 
saved and the reason why you want to see them saved because if they burn it's a bit of God that's burning in the lake of fire because soul constitutes the Lord himself and I hear the writer say what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what will a man give in exchange for his soul and so you're hearing a whole lot of preaching and a whole lot of preaching today is the source and the vehicle of bringing men out of darkness into his marvelous light. God bless you today. We're going to break. We're going to break. And uh, Brother Walter Jenkins and whoever else is helping him out has prepared physical food we have been receiving spiritual food, but we're going to break and go and receive some physical food. And you don't have to pay anything for it. It, it, it has all been paid for. So we're going to break and go into uh, fellowship in the cafetorium, and then we'll come back in here and continue I preach it on God bless you would you please stand and uh, as you are standing, uh, Bishop Rush has a word for you and uh, when he finished with his word we're going to go into the cafeteria it's just right that we give our tithes and offerings. Somebody say amen. And I would like to ask you to come now. I don't know if they're envelopes, but these buckets are here. Baskets are here. Reverend Shiner, would you put this in there for me, please? Thank you so much. Bring your tithes and offering. Make it out to Mount Horeb, Missionary Baptist Church. Um, you just bring your tithes and offering, and we're going to pray over that and pray over the food and dismiss you. And uh, my entourage will be leaving in a little while, but we're going to eat with you. Come on, say amen. amen. And then we'll be headed to service and picking up other people on the way. Amen. But we wouldn't miss this for anything. Amen. amen. I would not miss coming home. Amen. So it's good to see all of you and your mom and the family. Hello for me. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All oh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Hold somebody's hand. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, the angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Father, we thank you for this first portion of this horror bowl. We thank you, God, for this great man of God. We thank you for his wife for life. We thank you for his family. We thank you for this church. We thank you for the tithes. We thank you for the offering. We thank you for the preachers that have come this morning. We thank you for those that are listening today. God, we thank you for all the viewers today. We thank you for the food. Bless it. Let it be nourishment for our bodies. We give your name all the praise. Come on and say all the praise. All the glory. And all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed for breakfast. Amen. And then come back. What a mighty God.